everybody. So I wanted to respond to this comment. It says, angels don't have sperm. Their spirit, they are spirit with no blood or flesh. The life of the flesh is in the blood, Leviticus eleven seventeen. So that's a partial truth. The life of the flesh is in the blood. But um, the Bible does state that the Nephilim are, I am going to draw a distinction between Nephilim and the celestial bodies and the terrestrial bodies. And I'm also going to talk about uh, Jesus's body, his glorified body, after he rose from the dead, okay? Uh, first, I want to establish there's a difference between Nephilim, celestial, and celestial bodies. Let's talk about Nephilim first, Genesis chapter 6. First, I'm going to start at Jude um, chapter 1, verses 6 through 7, okay? And Jude talks about the angels which kept not their first estate. These are the angels, the fallen angels. Um, but left their own habitation, he hath preserved an everlasting chains under darkness until the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in a manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example of suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So the Bible is talking about this back to back, chapter verses 6 and 7. Um, these are the angels, these are the fallen angels who left their first estate. And then you go over to uh, Genesis chapter 6, they're talking about when the giants were in the earth as a result of Adam and Eve, mankind that God created, they start, once they start to have female daughters, then verse two in chapter six says that the sons of God, which are these fallen angels, saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he is also flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. Okay, so we can go on and on about that. So now you're talking about this, uh, the flesh and the body, how these, these angels who are supernatural beings can't have um, sperm. Okay, so I want to take you to, you guys know about shape-shifting. Okay, angels like Satan can appear as an angel of light. They change. They, they can come in different forms. So Hebrews talks about, um, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2, be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unawares angels take on different shapes and forms the bible is very clear about that now let's get back to the body part so where you're talking about the function if they have the equipment that's needed to produce um offspring. genesis and numbers if you read those books it's all clear that the flood of noah had to happen as a result of what these Sons of God did by producing with these women and creating these giants, these Nephilim. So I'm going to read because I just don't want to leave anything out. I'll type this up. So the misconception of the supernatural is thinking people in heaven and other beings look like ghosts on TV and in movies. They have supernatural bodies. They eat food and they drink the way we do, but they are not restricted to physical material the way that we are. So they don't need to walk in and out of a door to enter into a building. Okay. They can enter a room without using the doors and such. So Jesus popped up on the scene at the Last Supper. So you had um, G Jesus after he passed away, passed away, Lord. Jesus, once he was resurrected, um, he, had, he had flesh. Okay, so pay attention to Jesus' conversation with the disciples in Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 49. What Jesus' body was like. Okay, Jesus in uh, verse 36, okay. Um, this is after the resurrection. Jesus appears to the disciples. Okay. While they were still talking about something, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. He just popped up on, them. <laughs> okay. He just, just sprung up on them, right? 37. They were startled and frightened thinking they saw a ghost. So they're looking at Jesus's body and they think they're seeing a ghost, right? So imagine that when you see my flesh, you don't think I don't look like a ghost to you, right? However, he, he just popped up. So listen, he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do you doubt in your minds? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. So Jesus is saying, I have flesh and bones. You can touch me. You can feel me. You can handle me. But they still thought he was a ghost because he looked like a ghost. Jesus had a glorified body. Supernatural bodies are not like our bodies, okay? So remember also Thomas, 
when Thomas would not believe, right? So this is the same dinner. Thomas was one of the disciples who would not, did not want to believe that Jesus was resurrected until he'd seen him himself. So you go to John chapter 20, verses 24 through 29. Um, but Thomas, one of the 12, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. What we just read over in Luke, so he wasn't there for that moment. So the other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. They're telling Thomas this. But Thomas said unto them, except I shall see in his hands, except I shall, except I shall see in his hands the point of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into the side, I will not believe. And after eight days, again, his disciples were within, and the Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut. Jesus is making sure we understand the doors being shut. Jesus stood in the midst. He just popped up on the beginning, okay, with this same body that they thought looked like a ghost. But Jesus said, I have flesh and blood. Peace be with you. Verse 27, then said he to Thomas, reach hither with thy finger and behold my hands and reach thither your hand thrust into my side. All the things that he said, don't be faithless, but believe. And so anyways, so here we are, Luke chapter 24 still. So we're talking, Jesus is talking to the disciples, uh, verse 41. And while they yet believe not for, for joy and wonder, he said unto them, have ye here any meat? Jesus is asking for food. Okay. <laughs> this body that looked like a ghost to them that just pops up when the door is shut. Okay. The supernatural body, this glorified body, and Jesus saying it's flesh and blood glorified. He asked, have you any meat? And they gave him, verse 42, and they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. Okay, so guys, remember the marriage supper of the lamb. When we go to heaven, we're going to have glorified bodies just like Jesus. So we're going to eat. The Bible talks about there's trees and fruit and everything like that. So these angels have glorified bodies just like Jesus. Okay, so you guys... Read the scripture, understand that God created various types of flesh. So now, that's the Nephilim. So now let me show you the celestial and terrestrial, which I think is what was at the mall. If this incident really even happened at the mall, we weren't there. I don't know. You know, American news does not tell us all the facts. We all know that, okay? And if these people, if you got supernatural beings chasing after you guys, who's really going to take a picture? And if you know the government has known about these these beings forever so they're they don't want us to know okay so um the scripture even talks about that who hold the truth in lies and deceive us with the with the truth and keep things away from us so you know we're not being told in this country everything about the world that we live in you guys do understand that right so they're going to hide as much as they can from us so let me get to the celestial and the terrestrial and show you guys scripture so that's what i think was at the mall i think it was these um terrestrial beings if this actually happened so i mean i don't know i wasn't there 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verses 38 through 40. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. Okay, every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fish, and other of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one glory and the glory of the terrestrial is another glory. So real quick, before I run out of time, I did just want to share a short story with you guys. Okay. Um, all of these beings, first of all, are created by God. So they are subject to the name of Jesus Christ as believers. Even as those who don't believe you have the power the God's name, Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ, there's power in that name. And all of these beings are subject to the power of that name. And as a, um, a short story really quick, I was young. My mom and dad were in a bed. One of my sisters was in a bed with them. A dark hole appeared on the floor beside my mom as they were in the bed. And this being came up out of this dark hole in my mother and father's room and tried to pull my mother into that, into that dark hole. My father woke up and chased the thing out of our front door, proclaiming the name of Jesus. And my sister was in the bed and saw it. Many people talk about these possible, uh, these potential abductions and proving that those who have used the name of Jesus Christ were set free. So the bottom line is, Jesus is king. He's Lord. So use the name of Jesus. You need to know what to do in case you are in a situation, just in case this happens. So you guys, the name of Jesus is powerful. That's what we need to proclaim. And that's what we need to know. Use the name of Jesus because God is king, period. No fear here. All right. God bless.